Those 3 a.m. calls can come about economic crises as well as national security ones. Since I started running, many of the problems that had been there under the surface and weren't really being talked about, particularly in terms of the economy, have come to the surface fiercely. We have got to get control over our economic destiny. This cannot wait. So I feel so strongly, as you might guess. There are a lot of similarities between the economic policies of Senator Hillary Clinton and Senator Barack Obama. But there are still some important differences between the two. I want to really personalize these statistics. Mrs. Clinton tends to favor narrowly targeted programs to deal with specific problems, while Mr. Obama tends to favor broader programs that help middle and lower income families regardless of their individual circumstance. We have to take the same approach. Good morning, everybody. The issue that's burst onto the scene in recent days is a proposed federal gas tax holiday, a temporary suspension of the federal tax on gasoline, first proposed by Senator John McCain. I think we should have a gas tax holiday and pay for it. It says, guess what? We're paying attention to how much you are suffering. I think John McCain's proposal for a three-month tax holiday is a bad idea. So look, people need immediate relief. I actually have proposed a middle-class tax cut, and that will help offset some of the increased costs in gas right now. Yeah. Hillary's plan? Use the windfall profits of the oil companies to pay to suspend the gas tax this summer. Barack Obama says no, again. The fight over the gas tax is an excellent example of the difference between the senators' instincts. The same difference could be seen earlier this year when they each came out with plans to stimulate the weakening United States economy. Mrs. Clinton's plan includes specific increases in spending for various programs. Where did I put universal pre-K? Oh, okay. Ah, there it is. Whereas Mr. Obama talked about broad tax cuts. I not only have pledged not to raise their taxes, I've been the first candidate in this race to specifically say I would cut their taxes. These contrasting instincts are also related to a key criticism of each campaign. Mrs. Clinton's proposed gas tax holiday is deeply unpopular among economists and energy experts. They say it would in fact do relatively little to lower gas prices. We could suspend the gas tax for six months, but that's not going to bring down gas prices long term. You're going to save about $25, $30, or half a tank of gas. That's typical of how Washington works. A centerpiece of the Obama agenda is an across-the-board tax cut that would cost the federal government about $80 billion a year. That makes the price tag of his agenda higher than the price tag on Mrs. Clinton's agenda, and it leaves budget experts skeptical that he will be able to pay for it all. So the larger question is who really is going to move us toward fiscal responsibility, and I believe that we can get back on the path we were on. It was working well. It was one of the reasons why the economy was booming. Already, some of the Republicans are ginning, ginning up uh, you know, their potential attacks against me. Oh, the guy wants to you know, increase taxes, and John McCain wants to cut taxes. Well, look, uh, right now, Warren Buffett, I guarantee you, is paying a lower tax rate than most of you here. I want businesses to thrive, and I want uh, people to be rewarded for their success. But what I also want to make sure is that our tax system is fair. Despite these real differences between the two senators, Mrs. Clinton and Mr. Obama remain similar on many matters of economic policy. They both want to spend significant amounts of money to reform the health care system. They both want to regulate business more closely than President Bush has. And they have both been more detailed about how they would pay for their programs than Senator John McCain has been about how he would pay for his tax cuts. So the decision about which Democrat gets the nomination will probably not have an enormous impact on the economic debate during the general election. For The New York Times, this is David Leonhardt.